Hey guys, welcome to another plugin tutorial and today it's on World Edit. Now I've been meaning to cover this plugin for a long long time as it is my personal favourite and it has so many different cool features. So um, I will leave timestamps in the description below going to various different sections of this video as it's going to be quite long. Uh, so to start I'm going to show you a couple of nifty features before we get into it. Obviously the compass, if you left click a compass in your op or your, you have permissions, you will fly about the map and if you right click you will go through walls. So um, a lot of people don't actually know this is a feature of World Editor and it, it can be quite annoying so you may want to disable it depending on what your server is. We then have the forward slash forward slash undo command which obviously undoes a World Editor and then we have the redo as well so they are very useful. Then we have the limit command which obviously limits how many blocks you can change at once. This is great to protect yourself from accidentally ruining your whole server and finally we have the forward slash forward slash wand tool which will give you a wand where you can start selecting uh, various different shapes and whatnot. So um, we are going to get into the selection part of this video right now. So once you've selected your wand you will want to select your shape. So let's go ahead and select a cuboid by uh, doing this. So left click in one block and right click another and then we can type forward slash forward slash set and a block such as wood and that will give us a rectangle. Obviously if we didn't mean to that we can undo it like so. But what can we do with this selection? Well there's a lot we can do. It. We can do expand followed by an amount such as 5 and then a direction such as upwards and that will expand 5 upwards like that. If you're wondering what these particles are, it is um, a World Edit visualization plugin which I covered tomorrow. So um, if you're watching this in the future, you can just click the link in the description, download this plugin for free off a spigot. We can also um, obviously go south or east, and um, that will go in that particular direction. So if you hit F3, you can see which way is which. Um, so that is quite useful. So uh, if I go back to this, we can type forward slash forward slash deselect, decel, and that will get rid of the selection. There is another pretty nifty way of selecting an area by doing forward slash forward slash pos1 and pos2 instead of left clicking, right clicking. This is a really useful feature if you need to select something in the air and you don't want to put blocks down or build a tower up, which can be quite annoying if you wanted a building all the way up there. You wouldn't want to do it, that would take quite a while. So let me just deselect that. You can also do forward slash forward slash H pos1, which will select the block you are looking at, which is another cool feature, which I actually only learned today. I never realized that was a part of World Edit, but apparently it is. So uh, let's deselect that. So now we're going to look at the different types of shapes that you can select with World Edit. So there is spheres, there is polygons, and there is cylinders. So let's start with the polygons by doing C S E L poly. And with this you can create a 2D poly. So if you left click um, the start of your block, and then right click to add points all the way around, make sure you hit every single block so it knows what shape it is. And uh, there we go. Once you've done that, you could either set it to a material or you could expand it, such as uh, vertically, by doing 5 and then up. And then we can set that to 5. There we go. So we have created a cool little polygon. Obviously, you could create it any shape you want. Undo 2. Oh, undo 2. There we go. There we go. And if we do full slash SEL, that will clear the selection. We can then set it to sphere, and this is pretty cool left click the center and then right click to set the radius so you can set it whatever size you want and then set it to a material such as wood there we go we have a wooden sphere we can uh, undo that as well so we don't want a wooden sp sphere in the middle of our world and finally we can have a look at the cylinder which is pretty cool the way you do this so um, let's just get rid of our selection first and left click the center so similar to the sphere right click um, one point which will be the radius and then right click another point which will be the radius going the other direction so um, 
imagine the what was it x and z axis you need to set both of those radii and then obviously we can change the y value by doing expand and then a value such as six up would be u down would be d so uh, let's do that and then you can set it to a material like that and there we go we have a glass cylinder which is pretty pretty cool like that and then we can deselect it decel like that so there is only a few more things i want to cover with um this selection part obviously we can go back to cuboid which is the one, main one to use the other ones are only for specific things i wouldn't use them too often to be honest so uh, if you do select an area let's do that now let's pop one here and uh pause, let's pause two there so we've selected an area what we can do is force us force us outset and then the number and that will increase it by five in every direction and obviously inset surprise surprise makes it smaller by five in every direction so um that is it for the selection if we deselect it i'll show you a couple more nifty commands so there is the count command if you select an area and do full slash full slash count and the block id it will tell you how many blocks are in this area which is very useful um, when i found about this command it was good because you could make sure your building is the correct length because once it's finished and it looks wonky that's a bit too late to be honest so the next section we will be looking at is the clipboard section so i've built a pretty pretty terrible house here to be honest and we are going to select it using the wand probably the easiest way of selecting it make sure it's all selected and we are going to copy it so the important part is it copies relative to your position so what i'm going to do is get some lapis and go out one two three uh, and four blocks stand on the fourth block look at it and do full slash copy so this will copy these 100 blocks relative to where i'm standing so if i were to potentially go up um, this amount of blocks and do full slash paste it will paste in front of me four blocks so that is very important when using this so if i undo that we can also instead of using copy we can use cut which uh, is pretty cool that you can do that and then obviously paste it in you probably use this when writing essays copy and pasting something off wikipedia i know i've never done that before in my life never ever would i dream of doing that but <laughs> hmm. But um, that is a pretty cool feature. You can also save it as a schematic by doing schematic, save, and a name. That will save it in a folder, in your world edit folder. And then you can upload it to the internet, you can give it to a friend, you can upload it to, to another server. And you can do schematic, load, test. That will load it into your clipboard and then obviously you can paste it. Now a really cool feature of this is the rotation command so if we rotate it either 90 180 270 or 360 degrees um, we will see that it will paste in a different um, area so let me just paste it a few times and you will see we have lots of houses surrounding us another really cool feature is the flip command so if we do full slash flip and in a direction such as up it will flip it upside down so if we paste it there we go, we have our upside down house uh, like that. And obviously you could flip it in different directions, such as south, down, uh, although that may not change it. So we flipped it back to normal, but the door is on the left side because we flipped it on the south um, direction. So that is everything on the clipboard section that I want to cover. I'm trying not to ramble too much, otherwise this video would be an hour long. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be. Uh, so next we're going to move on to the generation section. A much easier way to create a shape is by using the generation commands. So instead of selecting a sphere for example, you can just do full slash full slash sphere, uh, the block ID and the radius. So um, if I go up, that will create obviously a wooden um, sphere. So if we undo that, we can also create a hollow sphere which is very very useful by doing H sphere the block ID let's do 20 and the radius 5 so as you can see um, 
we aren't surrounded by blocks, we are in fact in a little dome. Uh, so that's very useful that you can do that. And obviously you can do it with all the other ones. So we could create a cylinder like that. And obviously the third value is the height. So that will create a wooden cylinder that is five radius and five, um, five blocks tall. Let's undo that, undo that as well. And then we can actually create pyramids, which is very cool. I used this for an adventure map I created once and probably deleted. So if we do pyramid um, and then hit enter, we can set the block. So that's going to be 30, mm, let's just do what's called so four size. Let's just do 20. This will be quite a big pyramid, 11,000 blocks. Very, very big. And if we go up there, as you can see, this looks like a really cool temple. If we undo it before I lose too many frames, we can actually create a hollow one, which would be very useful for an bench map. Make it a bit smaller. I've just realized I wrote 420 and that was a few days ago, so I didn't do that by complete accident. But uh, if you put a H before it, obviously that makes it hollow, which will make it a lot easier to build rooms and whatnot inside. If we undo that, uh, there is only a few more things I want to to uh, cover, there is the pumpkins command, which um, you can probably guess what this does. Pumpkins, that will spawn lots of pumpkins around you, which is pretty nice if you want to create a map or something. And you can also generate a forest by doing forest gen, the size, which is going to be five, the type of tree, which is going to be redwood, and then the dens density, which is going to be 10. So um, as you can see, this has created five trees very, very, very close together, like that. So if I undo two, there we go, it's all gone. So that is everything in the generation um, section. We are going to move on to, uh, let's have a look at brushes now. So the brush part of World Edit is definitely my favorite. There are so many things you can do with it, including making cool mountains or just messing about with the terrain. So let's start by doing four slash four slash BR. And there is a lot you can do. You can do brush clipboard. And if we still have that house, we will be able to paste it around like that. Just um, spamming it about, which is <laughs> kind of ridiculous to be honest. But uh, if we want to improve how it looks, we can do brush smooth followed by um, the size. So let's just do five by five using any block. And if we right click about, we can make it into a nice weird peer thing. I don't know. So if you only want to, it to affect a single block, you can do mask and then the block ID. And this will only affect sand, which is obviously 12. We can put a comma and then add even more blocks, such as um, stone, dirt, grass, all that good stuff. And these will be the only blocks that are affected. Now, I showed you various uh, shapes earlier, such as cylinders and spheres. You can use that when using the brush tool. So if we do brush sphere, followed by the uh, ID of the material, which is 20, and the radius, 5. Uh, and then we can obviously create cool little spheres everywhere, like that. And uh, flowers seem to be raining from the sky. You can then do 4 slash 4 slash matte, and change material to maybe lapis lazuli, if that's pronounced correctly. Or is it lapis lazuli? I think it's that, actually. So that is cool. You can do brush CYL, and then uh, the material, the length, the other length, and the height. Uh, actually, no, only that. So only both of those. So that will create a cylinder like that, which is pretty cool. That's pretty useful. The most useful thing I would say when creating mountains is uh, doing brush sphere, and then 12, maybe five. Spam sand about until you've created your mountain shape. And then obviously use the, not that tool, the smoothing tool to make it m look more like a mountain or a hill. So there are some pretty nifty utility features that come with World Edit. So if you force slash force slash butcher, that will kill all of the hostile mobs. If you type force slash force slash jump to, that will teleport you to the position you're looking at. If you look at a wall and do 4 slash 4 slash through, it's about like that, you will go through the wall, which is very useful when building huge buildings and you don't want to smash through. If we go up to a tree and fly up to the top like this, we can do remove 
above and then on the mount and that will remove um, all of the material like that. So that's a cool feature. You can obviously do the remove below. So if we were standing on the ground that will remove it like that. You might want to be careful with that though. So let's undo that. There we go. And if we come over here and mess around with the water pool, it messes up all of the water. However, if we do fix water and a radius, five, it will completely fix it. You can also do that with lava, which is very useful as it would take ages using a bucket. Um, so they are a few of the utilities that I like to use. There is also the replace near. I use this so often. So replace near, a radius, 30. Replace 2 with 22. Now this will look a bit crazy. As you can see, we have replaced uh, all the grass in a radi radius of 30 with lapis lazuli, or however you pronounce that. So uh, if you're using, of course that's replaced near, uh, for example 20, replacing 2, and you want multiple blocks, you can use percentages. So the way to do this is, for example, 33% 1, 33% 5, 33% uh, 22 comma 33 percent 56 now it doesn't have to add up to 100 which um, you might have said that's over 100 what are you doing uh, but it doesn't matter you could go up to a thousand if you really wanted to so each block should appear an equal amount of time as you can see it more or less does so you can use that with anything whether you're um, creating a sphere or setting a wall which uh, brings me on to another thing if I go down here, select a region, instead of just setting it, we can do wall and then five. Oh, make sure there is an S on the end, and that will create a wooden wall around uh, your area. So that is very useful. So the last part is going to be utilities two slash um, cool commands. So um, instead of using the full slash set command, you can use the re replace command, such as replacing two with five in your selected region. Um, so if I just select an area here, it will replace all the grass blocks with wood. Um, if I create another selection here, pause two, and do full slash outline five, it will create um, sort of a hollow block. Um, which brings me on nicely to my next command, which is full slash hollow with two L's. That will hollow out, hollow out the region that you have selected. There is the forward slash drain command. So if we go into some water, we can drain it like that. Um, so if you're having trouble with water all over the place, you can get rid of it. And if I just get some fire, so flint and steel. Um, flint, there we go. Oh, come on. Give it to me. There we go. So if I set fire to these trees and you're panicking, your, your house is burning down, you can do four slash EX and then a radius, and that will extinguish all the fire. Now, I only just learned of this command a few minutes ago. I really wish I knew it back when some of my friends um, got a bit mad with flint and steel and burnt down some of my buildings. So that would have been very useful back then. There are a few more commands I want to go over, which is the snow command. And that will create snow in a certain radius. Could be useful for an adventure map. Um, like that, instead of placing it by hand. And there is the regen command, which if you select an area, you can obviously regenerate it to how it was previous, um, like that. So I believe that is 90% of everything in World Edit. Um, these are all the important things at least. There are a few tiny other things that you probably won't use too often. So I hope this video has helped. I will obviously be doing a World Guard video similar to this um, next time. So subscribe, like, comment and I will see you next time.